I'm Dr. Devra Davis, and I'm here in Australia talking about my new book, Disconnect. I'm an epidemiologist and a toxicologist, a fellow of the American College of Epidemiology and formerly the American College of Toxicology. I worked in the Clinton administration. I was the founding director of the Board on Environmental Studies and Toxicology at the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, and that was the group that did the study recommending the ban on smoking on airplanes quite some time ago. But I'm really here because I'm deeply concerned about what we know now about microwave radiation and how it affects the developing brain and body. Recently, the uh, cell phone industry has been issuing advisories itself. These are often buried inside phones, and they're telling you something very important that everyone has a right to know, which is a mobile phone is a two-way microwave radio. It's never been tested for safety for long-term use, and because of that, Telstra has now begun to issue advice about using a headset, using a speakerphone. In America, Consumer Reports, a respected uh, publication, has recently recommended that no one keep a mobile phone in their pocket. And that's because if phones were tested in the pocket, the levels of radiation from those phones would exceed the safety guidelines that are currently operating. Brain cancer actually is more than 200 different types of diseases. 200 different types. And it's a terrible disease. Most people don't survive it. Their lives are shortened by it. What we know about it is that ionizing radiation causes it. And we know that from studies of people who got heavy doses of x-rays for treatment for something and then went on to develop brain cancer 30, 40, or 50 years later. Studies have been done that have looked at what happens to neural stem cells, baby stem cells, brain cells, when you expose them to mobile phone radiation. And what those studies find is that if you expose those cells, you can look at their membranes, and you find the membranes are weakening and opening. And all of these tests have experimentally indicated that mobile phone radiation can damage human brain cells and cause more damage to young human brain cells than to old human brain cells. Because when you put that phone here, your head is the antenna. And half of the radiation from the phone gets into you. That's the modeling work that we've done at Environmental Health Trust, which shows that a young brain will absorb the radiation almost all the way through the eye of a three-year-old, and even an adult, 34-year-old, it will still get into this part. And we are seeing effects uh, of, of many different sorts as a consequence of this. Those who are on the front line of dealing with young children are deeply concerned about this at a professional level in the United States and around the world in Israel, as well as France, as well as Belgium and Taiwan, there's an active government program to discourage the use of mobile devices by young children. There's a growing literature showing that prenatal exposure to mobile phone radiation causes serious defects in the offspring. Smaller brains, more brain damage, smaller livers, more liver damage, damage to skin cells as well. There are good reasons for concern about the long-term and short-term effects of mobile phone radiation, particularly on children, but especially on sperm. Now, the sperm studies have been developed in more than seven different countries, and what they find is that the sperm that are exposed to current levels of mobile phone radiation die three times faster and have three times more damage on their DNA, indicating that mobile phone radiation is damaging to human sperm. More than 100 scientists have joined with me and with the Chief of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Yale University Medical School. We have put together the Baby Safe Project, and they are handing out information to every pregnant woman that walks into Yale New Haven Medical Center, 4,500 a year, telling them how and why they need to avoid exposing the pregnant abdomen to mobile phone radiation. The breast cancer story in mobile phones is complex, as breast cancer is a complicated disease. Most of the women who get breast cancer are age 50 and older. However, growing numbers of young women are developing this disease who don't have any of the inherited risk factors for it at all, who have no family history of it, but they have one thing in common. They have all stored a mobile phone right in their bra. And in several cases, the tumors have developed right under the antenna of the phones. No phones are tested for little kids, for babies playing in their bouncy chair, for toddlers sitting in front of an iPad on an iPod, for pregnant women holding these things over their bodies. 
There are no tests of radiation absorption. That's why we at Environmental Health Trust are doing that modeling now, and we would like to work, of course, with industry to further validate our models. But it's really critically important that we do this research, that we train people in this field, and that in the meantime, we join with other countries around the world giving people safety information. You have a right to know that that mobile phone is a two-way microwave radio and should not be kept close to your testicles or your ovaries or your heart or your brain. And where we are with this issue today is where we were with cars and seatbelts. Australia has led the world in requiring seatbelts. It is leading the world with respect to handguns, and it can lead the world with respect to the right to know about mobile phone radiation. I'm very proud that Dr. Charlie Teo has issued a call for Australia to implement its current laws. You don't need a new law here. You've got the laws you need. You just need to implement them to give people the right to know about mobile phone radiation. And again, I'm delighted that Telstra's taken the first step. I think Arpanza actually does have information on their website about how to reduce radiation by keeping your calls short and telling you how to use a headset and a speakerphone. But there needs to be a more concerted effort to communicate this, just like the Canadian Parliamentary Committee on Health has recently called for. Thank you.